Hi, this is Chris Lavin from Extreme Polishing Systems in Deerfield Beach. And today we have an action-packed day uh, for anybody that's out there that's looking to do a concrete overlay. Uh, many floors that you go off to try and polish uh, are not polishable because they're too soft, they have lots of craters, they just won't look good, and the customer wants to have a perfect floor. Uh, so some high-end retail chains are big uh, fans of a uh, self-level concrete topping that has integral color to it or is just plain and polished and some like it with glass to be like that terrazzo look um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through how we make samples to help close the sales uh, once you've tied down a customer to the colors that he's looking for you make a sample you polish it you send it to them um, with normally your proposal and they sign off on the proposal and you get started on your job so the big thing is that when you guys are doing a self-level concrete topping, at Extreme Polishing Systems, we offer a few different varieties of engineered cement. We offer the uh, Rapid Set True, we offer the Mape, uh, and we offer the Ardex, okay? Um, Ardex and Mape both offer a white polished concrete self-leveling topping, okay? Um, all of these products are gonna be poured anywhere from three eighths to a half of an inch is what we like to see people pour them at. Um, normally some people, they go, oh, well, we only want to put down a quarter inch because we're trying to watch the costs. Uh, at a quarter inch, you're going to run into some problems because a lot of these floors aren't going to be as flat as you think they are and you may wind up grinding through part of it. And if you do, you're going to wind up doing the whole floor again, which is not a pretty, a pretty thing to have to do. Um, so what we're going to talk about is what do you do to the floor? You're going to do your floor prep. Your floor prep is going to be done with a 16 grit metal bond diamond or a shot blasting machine. And what we would like you to do is put down an epoxy. It's going to be your uh, primer coat. You're going to put down a all epoxy on the floor. You're going to beach it with sand. You're going to go and get sand and you're going to beach it to rejection. You're going to vacuum up the excess and now you have the actual base of what you're going to be able to pour your self leveler on top. Um, like I said, once you pick your self-leveler, the main thing with self-levelers is that you know exactly what the mix ratio is of water to the product. Um, and a lot of these these products are, to, I mean, to the ounce. Like if you're one ounce over, you know what I'm saying, like it's not gonna turn out like it's supposed to. So make sure you really follow those instructions specifically and pay close attention to detail when you're doing this type of work. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to uh, when you're doing a sample is you're gonna weigh out of the bag because these come in 50 pound bags. So you're gonna weigh out normally like a 10 pound mix is what we do. We'll, we'll cut the bag into five. We'll divide the water ratio by five and the powder ratio by five. And Jimmy's got the, the bucket right there that he just went and put on the scale. Um, and then what we do is we're taking our mixture of glass that we're gonna use or our mirror or our you know type of uh, mother of pearl stones or there's a lot of different things you can put in the concrete, okay? But you're gonna weigh that out proportionately. Normally, when we do a, uh, a sample, when we weigh out 10 pounds, that's gonna make us between two and three, depending upon how deep we pour it, okay? Um, and then normally what we're doing is we're mixing up approximately six pounds of glass for 10 pounds of the, uh, of the mix. So six pounds of glass for 10 pounds of mix, you can go five pounds, you can go four pounds, you can go three pounds. It's just a matter of how much product you want in the mix. Uh, I'm gonna show you some samples later that we've just done. We're gonna go out, we're gonna see Dr. Freddy. Dr. Freddy's out there putting some uh, samples together on a, uh, on a project that we're gonna be doing where it's gonna be, they had, they had the granite aggregate shipped in from Canada and it's gonna be placed down here in South Florida into the concrete, it's in a 4,000 pound mix and uh, they're gonna do an exposed aggregate. I've been talking to people a lot about the different grades and levels and how important it is when you do talk about polished concrete floors to somebody, if they don't have a specification written already, you really gotta qualify what the expectation is of the client, okay? So the different grades of polished concrete, are you know, there's cream polishes, there's salt and pepper polishing, you know, where, where you're gonna break the cream of the concrete and you're gonna expose a salt and peppery look, showing the sand of the concrete. Um, and then there's exposed aggregate where you're going to cut down to the aggregate in the concrete, okay? And a lot of times when people use a special mixed aggregate in the concrete, they want to show that. So it really takes on a nice, unique look. 
a lot of people that are out there on uh, the YouTube channel right now, maybe in Canada, they may be in an area where you have granite as an aggregate, you know what I'm saying? You could be in Texas with peat gravel as an aggregate. Uh, that's just, those are just standard aggregates. In Florida, we have limestone, uh, and limestone to me isn't like that great to expose because to me it doesn't look that good, okay? But when I see granite aggregate or some of the uh, nice river rocks uh, in some of the areas that we have in the U.S., those are beautiful floors to do, exposed aggregate, polished. Um, and when you do those, it's important that you have a good counter-rotating machine. I'm a big fan of that counter-rotating machine. Again, the Genie, the Gigantic Genie, the Genie Pro, um, and we're, we're coming out with more counter-rotating machines that we're going to be having in here by the end of the year. Um, I got our first Rhydon, uh, Rhydon Planetary Polisher that's remote control that's coming in. Uh, that should be in here in June. That's called Big Money. Big Money is a 42-inch grinder. We're super excited to have, have the product line here, um, and it's going to be available for rent. I'm starting a program uh, coming the beginning of next month when the machine comes in to where you'll be able to call us up, give us what the square footage is of your job. We supply you with the diamonds, the machine, and the man to power the machine. So all you really need to do is just have a couple of laborers there to help with dust removal, uh, maybe some edges if you got some edge work that's gonna need to be done, but the big money's gonna go up about an inch to the wall. Um, and a lot of the big places where big money's gonna go is gonna be large industrial floors, airplane hangars, uh, places where they have large access because big money can't go through a door. It's a little bit too too fat of a machine to get through a 36 inch door. It's 42 inch, so you need a double a double front door to go through, or you need some kind of type of garage door to go through. Um, so you have your cream polish, your salt and pepper polish, and you have an exposed aggregate polish. Okay, and then you have levels of the concrete. Okay, some people want to have just a satin finish or a matte finish, which is where you normally stop at 200 or 400 on the resin pads. Um, you're going to have a level 2, which is an 800, a level 3, which is 1500, and level 4, you know what I'm saying, for a high gloss shine is the 3000 grit. Um, and then we were talking uh, at, at the one school that we're doing a project at, where in the bathrooms they want to have like a discreet, a discreet sheen on the floor. So like that's where you're going to probably stop around the 200 grit. Um, and once again, depending upon what level you're going to go to, is really going to depend upon what type of sealer you're going to choose. But I'll tell you right now, this Extreme Hard 2 product that we have is an amazing product. It's the, it's the one we're putting seven coats down. Uh, the crystals grow on the surface. The floors are turning out much shinier than, than the normal standard guard products or the protectors. Uh, it's a different type of a shine. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a clarity of like a chandelier. Um, so, like those those different types of sealers that you're going to be using you know if it's a specified sealer that's already in there we stock Ameripolish, we stock Schofield, uh, we stock the conversion product um, if you need the Prosico you can call us up we can get you the Prosico product whatever type of densifier or sealer you need let Extreme Polishing Systems be your, be your stop shop for that um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go out and we're going to see Dr. Freddy he's going to start to, to do that sample of the exposed aggregate for us that we're putting together and we're gonna have Jimmy show us how we do the mixing and how we make our samples, okay? So come on and join me, all right? All right, so here we are. We're back on the slab here at Extreme Polishing Systems and we are gonna be showing you how to mix the water to the actual um, engineered cement that we have here. The product that we have here is Mape. It's called their Ultra Topping. This is an interior exterior and this is the gray, so. We have Dr. Freddy and uh, Dr. Jimmy out here. They're gonna help uh, demonstrate putting this all together. So here we go. We're gonna put the water in first, okay? You're gonna pour it into a regular five gallon pail. Mix that up.
the mentor, it's very important that you definitely do it exactly for the right amount of time, right amount of liquid. It's super, super important, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna have too many air bubbles that are gonna be in your cement, okay? And you're gonna have yeah, different colors, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's really important that you stay consistent. Especially when you're doing it out of buckets, okay? Or you know, opposed to putting it out of a big pump. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill up our little, uh, we, have, we have three little Tupperwares that we got at a dollar store, and we're gonna fill those up. We're gonna make it about a half inch, three eighths to a half inch is what you want, okay? You know I'm gonna make two, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. You gonna make three? Yeah. Okay, good. A little bit more there. Perfect. All right, so what we have here is we have our product that we're going to be putting in the mix, okay? Um, this, this product we have in our catalog, we have all the different glass, mirror, two-side mirror, uh, the mother of pearl. Uh, you can buy this from us by the pound or you can buy it, you know, in 50-pound bags. When you have a large project, you're going to be buying it in 50-pound bags, okay? But what we've done right now is we've divided this all up. This is one pound a piece of all the product, and we're going to mix this up throughout our three samples of our Mape ultra topping interior exterior uh, product okay and uh, we, we're gonna do we're gonna do this first one here we're gonna do black mother of pearl and then the mirror so you just broadcast it like Jimmy's doing right now glass in there also. Definitely a little bit more black in there, huh? Keep in mind, if you want that terrazzo we look, you have to put a fair amount of product in there. A lot of it is going to sink to the bottom and may not even appear on the very top part of the surface when you start to grind. You don't want to clump too much because then it gets it's hard to get the holes out. Feel them. Okay. If you put too much in one area, just and, and you don't want to just drop a whole bunch in one area. Just right, evenly kind of space evenly it. Space it. Kind of like a chocolate chip cookie, right, Jimmy? Yeah. If you put too much in it, it just be, creates like a crater, and then it's hard to get that, you know, fill it back in or we'll grind it all the way down. Now the next one we're gonna go with the green. Let's start putting the green in this one. We're gonna go green, black, and mirror. Kind of like you're shaking the dice at the craps table. There you get a seven or an eleven. Jimmy and I get older, we're going to own a cupcake shop and we're going to make cupcakes. And that's what our goal is for retirement, is to own a cupcake shop. <laughs> so we can put the sprinkles on top of the frosting. 
You know, I'm, I'm starting to believe that because you've been saying that for a long time. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for some investors out there though that would like to invest in that cupcake shop with us. There we go. That's gonna be a nice one. And the last one you're gonna do just uh, let's just do black and mirror. Okay? This hard is in. Uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be polishing this in about three hours, and you can get a sample out for your customer. Bubble wrap it, ship it UPS, and uh, they can approve it for you. Here's some of the finished samples that we did yesterday. This one here is the same gray that we're uh, doing today. This is a finished product, and we did a lighter green glass with uh, the the mirror and the mother of pearl. This one here is black and mother of pearl in a white topping from uh, Mape. They're right down the street here. Good people, good product. This is the same white with the light green, the same, the same mix it's in over here. And then here's just another sample because we wanted to get one to uh, Mape so they can show that to their clients. Anyways, if you're thinking about a job um, and you need some samples made, feel free to give us a call on here. We're more than happy to help you out. Here's some samples now. These have already been ground one time. And then what we do to fill all the little pinholes, and when I mean pinholes, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be able to see the pinholes here in this concrete. See all those pinholes? And then another good way of looking at those pinholes is over here in this one that we're doing all these little holes okay these are little capillary channels that uh form in the concrete and then what we do is we fill that with our rapid set true or uh, not the true but the rapid set skim coat or you can go with the uh, product that we have from metzger mcguire called pit grout um which is an epoxy type fill so those are your two choices to fill up all your grout holes and do your, your grout preparation all right now we're doing both sides. Right now you've done this one on both sides. both sides. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch Freddie do some grinding and start start the process. Um, a lot of this you may not see the whole thing through because it's not that exciting to watch the, the whole process go through. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the screen all the different steps that he used. Going, starting off with the metal bond diamonds, going all the way up to the final finish, which is 3,000, okay? So enjoy, enjoy what we're gonna see, okay? And we'll talk to you in a little bit.